Did you know that having a brain chip could allow someone who doesn't even have eyes to see for the first time ever? So, this is what you need to know about brain chips. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Today we're exploring the fascinating world of brain chips. But before we dive in, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest videos. First things first, what exactly are brain chips? Well, imagine a tiny implantable device that can interact directly with your brain, enhancing cognitive abilities and memory, and even providing instant access to information. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? But believe it or not, it's a reality. Now, just to get the obvious question out of the way, the only reason that any kind of brain implant is even possible is that our brains are basically naturally occurring electronic devices. Every single action that you take comes from your brain, sending electrical signals through your nervous system to your various body parts. And so, what neuroscientists realized is that by inserting electrodes into our brain that can both record and send these pulses of electricity, and then connecting those electrodes to a chip that can relay information to and from your brain, we can effectively restore and even enhance our existing brain function. That's it. That's how a brain chip works. Elon Musk announced that the first human has received a brain implant through his Neuralink startup marking a new step forward for the company and its goal to connect the human brain to computers. But what exactly is Neuralink? And what should you know about it? Let's find out. Neuralink, the brainchild of Elon Musk, has been making waves in the technology and scientific communities. With claims of merging humans with artificial intelligence, it's no wonder that there is so much hype surrounding this innovative venture. But amidst all the excitement and media coverage, it is essential to dive deeper into the science behind Neuralink and its potential impact on our society. So, how does Neuralink work? Neuralink's system involves the implantation of tiny electrodes into the brain. These electrodes, finer than a human hair, are strategically placed to pick up electrical signals from individual neurons. Once these signals are captured, they are transmitted to a computer for decoding and interpretation. This intricate connection between the brain and technology opens up a realm of possibilities for medical treatments and human-machine interaction. By understanding and decoding the electrical signals generated by the brain, Neuralink's technology can potentially help researchers gain insights into how the brain works and develop targeted therapies for various neurological conditions. Neuralink made headlines by showing a video of a monkey playing Pong with his mind. Controlled by a surgically implanted wireless device that can directly read brain signals and interpret its intended commands. The technologies that enable such communication between a computer and the brain are called brain-machine interfaces, also known as BMIs. Brain-machine interfaces, or brain-computer interfaces, as the terms are used interchangeably, are technologies designed to directly plug into the nervous system, the brain, the retinas in the eyes, which are actually a part of the brain itself, the spinal cord, or the peripheral nervous system. The Neuralink example and other similar technologies are designed to read and decode neural signals from individual neurons in selected parts of the brain in an attempt to understand the brain's outputs. Instead of the outputs going to the arm of a monkey or a human controlling a joystick to play Pong or some other video game, they go to a computer that plays the game instead. More recently, Musk told a crowd in Dubai, over time, I think we will probably see a closer merger of biological intelligence and digital intelligence. He added that, it's mostly about the bandwidth, the speed of the connection between your brain and the digital version of yourself, particularly output. Currently, brain-computer interfaces are mainly one-directional, with the most common uses enabling some motor control and communication tools for people with brain injuries. There has recently been some success in stimulating the brain to feel. One of the first areas where this technology will be tested is among paralyzed individuals. Neuralink's president, Max Hodak, wants to try the new technology on five different paralyzed people. They will initially try to type on a computer with their minds. 
These types of experiments have been done before, but it won't stop there for Neuralink. The goal is for individuals to eventually be able to regain control of their paralyzed limbs. Individuals who are not able to speak will also be able to access the part of the brain that is responsible for speech. In the presentation, Musk talked about how they want the technology to be controlled by an app on your smartphone. This was a big point for them, as they believed if someone had to go to a lab full of scientists every time to use it, that would defeat one of its main purposes, which is giving people immediate access to brain-integrated AI. Neuralink's brain surgery procedure is revolutionary, requiring no skull clamps, no sleep, local anesthesia, and no hair shave. The technology can be used to regulate mood and hormones, particularly for those with OCD or treatment-resistant depression. However, more research is needed to make this a reality, as it could potentially help those with these conditions. Receiving an implant comes with risks. Some are typical surgical risks, such as excessive bleeding or infection. Others are unique. For example, the brain simulation that BCIs entail can trigger epileptiform activity, a precursor for epilepsy, or epileptic attacks. The procedure also carries potential long-term risks in ensuring the implant continues to function over time. If all goes well, then the risk involves thinking about the device and technology and how stable they are in the long run, says Anne Van Huystenberga, professor of active implantable medical devices at King's College London, noting the body might try to reject the implant. Our bodies are very good at protecting ourselves from invasive objects. Neuralink's call for volunteers might sound like something out of a sci-fi novel. The device is designed to interpret a person's neural activity so they can operate a computer or smartphone by simply thinking about moving. No wires or physical movement are required, the company said. But despite the futuristic premise, experts say that the technology is far from facing widespread adoption anytime soon. This is a technology that really aims to help those who experience the greatest degree of impairment. That the technology might be used to allow companies to read minds or users to offload their memories is not happening anytime soon, though the future is still wide open. We're not going to have a participant where the device is implanted into somebody and we can then read their mind, at least not in my lifetime, says Van Hoistenbergi. The potential applications of Neuralink are vast and revolutionary. Imagine a future where paralysis becomes a thing of the past, as Neuralink could enable individuals to control prosthetic limbs with their minds. It could also be used to treat neurological disorders like Parkinson's disease or epilepsy by directly interfacing with the brain's neural activity. As with any emerging technology, there are challenges and uncertainties ahead. But one thing is clear. Neuralink represents a profound shift in our relationship with technology and ourselves. Whether it's the key to unlocking human potential or a Pandora's box of unintended consequences, only time will tell. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the future. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on Neuralink and other cutting-edge technologies. Until next time, stay curious.